may get some other folks sneak in here, but they can catch up. We got a, a lot to do in a couple hours, so it's a beautiful evening. We're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. Uh, my name is Tom Matthews. This is my wife Carolyn, and our other presenter this evening is Dan Hedrick from Maryland Forest Service. Okay. Uh, how many people know about home ground or have ever been to a prior home ground event? Or maybe put it this way, you've never been to a home ground event. Okay, well home ground, uh, it's a relatively new organization. We've been around about three years. Uh, our mission is all about natural resources education. And if you're new to home ground, you want to learn a little bit about it. Uh, a number of our board members I'm looking are in the audience tonight. Uh, Mark Mossinger over here, okay. Uh, Michelle and Matthew Crawford in the back here, okay, and I'm going to put a plug in for Michelle if you saw this month's Allegheny Magazine yeah. with the young man holding the little beagle puppy right here. Where's he at? What's his name? Henry. Henry. Henry is uh, going to have a lot of fun playing yesterday locally with all his good bucks and that beagle puppy. Do we talk about that beagle? I'm beating that. <laughs> okay, we have Mary Hubner, our chair. <laughs> okay, and Betty Ahern, and I think that's it for now. So we got a lot of home ground support here tonight. I have with me uh, home ground brochures. Uh, please see me if you'd like a copy of one of these. Uh, real quickly, our next big event, which is our third year, out of Rocky Gap State Park, Saturday, September the 14th. It's our Discover Allegheny Outdoors Festival. It's a four-hour event from noon to 4:30, 4 o'clock. We have a food vendor there, lots of exhibits, lots of opportunities for kids to engage in nature, learn about canoeing, kayaking, hiking, bird watching, archery this year, a lot of stuff going on. You can follow all this on our website. Uh, October we have a hawk watch planned, and our annual fall meeting, it's the second year for that, will be held at the Flintstone Fire Hall on Thursday, October the 17th. And that's a final auction night, good food, good presentation this year by Dr. Steve Keller from Frostburg State. He's going to talk on the American chestnut and uh, what else, Mary? Maybe the red spruce. Maybe red spruce. Yeah. So it'll be a very, very entertaining evening. Okay, that's a little brief intro. Now I'm going to let my wife chat. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, we're here tonight to talk about Ebitz Creek and to see what's in Ebitz Creek, at least some of the macroinvertebrates, which are the little larvas that are larval insect stages. But in order to talk about Ebitz Creek itself, we're going to look at a map for starters. Does anybody recognize just what the general map of this is? You can probably read the big label at the bottom. <laughs> All right, this is Allegheny County, and Dan seems to so I dug this out. And the big blue blob right here is Rocky Gap. So Rocky Gap is just over that way a little ways, and we're on Evitz Creek, but Rocky Gap water actually flows into this creek. So upstream from here, a good ways, the water coming out of Rocky Gap flows into Evitz Creek and on down this side of the ridge. So we're down here, right about below number 22, and you guys can look at this a little bit closer, but one of the headwaters are way up here in Pennsylvania in Buchanan State Forest on the back side of Buchanan State Forest. So it's a forested area that it originates in on the back side of the upside of a mountain. Flows through our two lakes where Cumberland gets their water supply from. So we get our water supply from Lakes Coon and Gordon, which are all the way upstream from us right now. And then it flows through, you can see some forested area. The green on the map signifies forested areas. And then it goes on down through, and if you can think with me, things that might pass through, like the stream actually that Rocky Gap comes from is from the east side of um, that ridge, mountain ridge. But it flows through Rocky Gap, so there's campers, there's a golf course there, there's um, picnic facilities, there's big open grass fields. And then that water is actually, that stream was backed up, it was a man-made dam, so it's a stream that's backed up. But the stream itself cut through, many millions of years ago, cut through that gap. So it ends up in Evitz Creek naturally. It wasn't a man-made culvert or a big pipe that takes it through the mountain and empties into Evitz Creek. And then you come down through and you've got a lot of houses that probably have septic systems that are, I'm sure they have septic systems, the only thing you can have out that way. And then there's a lot of other kind of developments and a lot of agricultural use. And you come on down here to the golf course here just above us. So that's two golf courses that have 
have some stormwater flow that come in here. And we've got, we're going to see up here later on at the end of our evening here, we're going to see the stormwater culvert that enters all these parking lots into the creek. So we have four, at least four ways that there's pollutants that end up in this creek. So we've got agricultural, we've got the golf course maintenance practices, we have human uses in the ways of picnic grounds and um, just what we do alongside the creeks. And we've got stormwater runoff from big facilities as this, as well as houses and other things that are developed along the creek. And we have septic systems. So those are just a few of the things that you can think of that could be pollutants and probably are pollutants of some version here to Evans Creek. This is a very interesting tree that uh, you know, I've been messing around Evans Creek a lot in my life. I don't know if it's very common at all along Evans Creek, but it's very common along the Potomac River. Uh, this is a, called a river birch, okay? <laughs> but anyhow, uh, this river birch along the Potomac River uh, seldom gets very large. And think about this, it grows right at streamside, right at the edge of the river. So why wouldn't it get large? Think about that. What's your name? Kyla, Kyla, think about that. Why would that tree maybe not get very big right along the edge of the Potomac River? What happens in the springtime when we get a lot of rain? Okay, the water comes up and we get floods. And sometimes that water level can be 20, 30 feet above normal. And imagine a small river birch, a 10-foot tree with 20 foot of water above it. What happens? It pushes it right over. So you get a lot of river birch because they keep sprouting back, but they never get big, okay? But this is one that's been planted out here, but it's a pretty tree. It's typical of the birches. You probably know the uh, white birch up north with the white bark and the shagginess. Well, this is the river birch. It's got that uh, burnt orange bark and also the flaky appearance. So, and this box here, we walked by this last night. We thought, what kind of bird box is that? Uh, Betty left, no, Betty's left, but uh, that's for bats, okay? Yeah. Got okay. Got underneath where the bats would fly in, and it's good to have in these kind of areas to keep the insects down. Bats, uh, you know, during the day live in the cavities of old trees. I don't see if there's any in there. Or behind shingles at our home sometimes. But I didn't see any sign of them. There's a small crack, and they spend their day, and then obviously, you guys know this, they come out right at dawn, or dusk. Okay, on to the creek. Whitewash or something that would be... All the time to catch minnows. Why do fishermen like minnows? Ah, uh, for bait, right, Mary? Okay. We have a couple minnows we, we're going to show you after a bit. One big one we caught last night. We might get lucky today and catch a minnow. But a minnow saying is weighted on the bottom. Okay? Why is it weighted on the bottom? To keep the bottom of the net on the bottom of the creek. All right, if the net, mess it up a minute. If the net were in the water like this, all the aquatic life and minnows would swim under the net, okay? What we're going to do, one of us is gonna hold this, another one's gonna go upstream six or eight feet, and we're gonna flip rocks over. Remember the benthic, the term benthic, the bottom of the stream. A lot of these critters live underneath of those rocks. We're going to flip the rock over, and the current of the stream then is going to wash those helger mites and crayfish and mayflies down the stream in the current and hopefully be caught in our net. Okay? So that's the program. So I'm going to be working the net. Gregory, you're going to help me. Okay? And those, we're going to go over across the creek at a spot or two to start the network. And Carolyn's going to be on this side. And once we get a routine, we're going to give you a little free time. Do your own thing. To explore. Okay, learning about nature is all about adventure and exploring. Okay, looking around, being very observant. A good naturalist has a very keen eye and is very observant to life around him. Take a minute and look around you at the area you're in. Start to put the pieces of the puzzle together as you live and you, as you get older, you're going to, more and more of the pieces of nature begin to fall together. The Ewitch Creek today is a very slow, serene, quiet place. But trust me, in April or May, this could be a torrent. A very dangerous place with water 6, 8, 10 feet above where it is now. And that high water 
continues to ever change the stream dynamic. We had a gentleman out here last night was talking to us. If you can see that big sewer, that big concrete structure down there, he said 15 years ago that structure was on the, on the bank. There was no water behind that structure. And this is, very, this is not a problem. This is just how streams evolve and change with water flow over thousands and thousands of years. Okay. I think these kids are very eager to get in the creek. What do you guys have? Oh, we got a lot of good stuff. Does Steve need a photograph?